welcome back. Let's just dive right in. We got PNA template up there, our pond bacteria that's ready to go to seaweed if things go right, fingers crossed. We also have our old amyloid hydrolysis here which has now gone macroorganism as lamp shells. Quick bit of cleanup here. The landforms when I started the game had their bottom card removed as part of the setup because this, that's what you do according to the rules in a two and three player game. But recently the living rules have changed to reflect the fact that you do not have to discard that landform, one landform from each refugium row. So I'm going to add those ones back that I discarded at the beginning of the game. Now that I have those added back in, I'm going to go ahead and start with our next event card. And the oceans rust out. This is an aftershock, which means we're going to have to draw another card and apply it also. Looks like we have a drought, a comet impactor, and an O2 spike, a double O2 spike. Our next card that will apply to that is, oh no, it's another aftershock, which means we'll draw another card and apply it also. This is a comet impactor. But we don't have an ozone layer yet. We haven't seen that card, so we're ignoring it anyway. We're going to get a smite, cancer, two extremophile events, some UV radiation. And our next card that will also be added to this long row of disaster is the ocean overturn, which will make ocean and coastal active, another smite, another drought, more UV radiation, a cancer event, and some plate tectonics are going to bring something out. Oh boy, this is going to be rough on our organisms that are out there. Let me activate the ocean and the coastal landforms and get started on doling out this punishment. We're going to start at the left of our first card and then work our way over through all of these and see if we have anything left after all this terrible stuff happening. First we have a drought icon. Drought only affects terrestrial organisms, our microorganism and our ocean-based macroorganism are not going to be affected by drought. If we did have a terrestrial organism for each drought symbol we would cause an atrophy to the macroorganism if it did not have a drought shield. Next we have a comet impactor coming from above. The first one we're going to run into is our ocean. Which is the clay mound. Got some mana structure, four of them, four fives and sixes, causes problems, more effective in a warming period. The clay mound is now in play. Have our mana structure in place and my often inability to remember roiling the decks. I will do that right now before we go on to our destruction. Next we have iron production which is going to cause of course the oceans to rust out. And this is a double O2 spike. Now we would take all of the O2 spikes and put them together from all the cards and then you would apply them when you come to the very first O2 symbol. But in this case this is the only card that has any O2 spikes on it so we're going to apply a double attack to each organism. First we'll deal with our big microorganism up here, the PNA template. Luckily it has three green entropy chromosomes on it. It is safe 
from the oxygen spike. The viroid is not. It has one on it, but it is going to take one atrophy, which will take its mutation first and send that back to the home row here. And the continent now has a mutation available again. And our lamp shells, luckily, have two oxygen shields to protect it also. One, it has the endosymbiont that's going to provide one of the shields. And then this yellow organ, the heart and blood that I purchased, also added an additional oxygen shield. So those two are also protective enough to help me survive the oceans rusting out without an atrophy for the lamp shells. Our next card to apply is our common impactor which was also an aftershock. And we have a smite event caused by acid rain. The depot biosphere is protected, hydrothermal vent is protected, clay mound is not. It just came out and already took some damage. Pumice raft, alkaline hydrothermal seep, the eutectic brine, the warm pond, and the Tholen storm clouds. All lose due to smite. Next we have our cancer icon which means that every macroorganism is going to have to take a cancer roll, which is similar to the Darwin roll in that every biont in the organism you have to roll two dice for, and for each organ you have to roll one die. But again, luckily for us, this yellow endosymbiont imparts a cancer shield. We still have to make the rolls, but now, instead of fives and sixes causing atrophy, now only sixes will. Time for our first cancer roll. Anything but sixes. Yes! What a roll. That was spectacular. Now, we're going to gain a catalyst for each one. And in macro organisms, their biosynthesis is for each one you roll, you get a catalyst added to your tableau of whatever color you choose. I chose to take one red and two green for the catalyst award for those three ones that I rolled. And I want to say thank you to the Cancer Shield for saving me from having to have any atrophies. That worked out great. That was a lucky roll. Not a single six in rolling eight dice. That is our only macroorganism. Next, we have an extremophile event, a double. And this, just like the oxygen spike, you would add up all of the extremophile, extremophile events on all the cards and apply them all once the first symbol comes up. So in this case, we have a double extremophile event that's going to affect all of our organisms. We'll start up here at the top with the PNA template. It has two biont and two metabolism chromosomes. That's going to protect it successfully from that extremophile event, that double. Then our viroid has no heat shield on it. It has no protection against that double event, which will remove that green disease cube which will get rid of bacterial rhodopsin and it will go back to the home row. And our viroid is knocked off.
and is ready to go when its turn comes up again. Our lamp shells sadly only have the one red biont and no other heat shield so they are going to suffer one atrophy and I'm going to take that atrophy from the blue cube that one was the one that gave me the red queen attack I much rather lose that than that oxygen shield this comet impactor is also going to cause ozone loss and a UV radiation event level 3 right now we only have three mutations on the PNA template so there's nothing to worry about there and the comet impactor will put us in a warming cycle and finally ocean overturn is going to cause another smite event again the deep hot biosphere and hydrothermal vent are immune to the smite but all of the other refugiums are not immune in fact warm pond will lose its last disorganized mana and remove it from the game we have another drought which only affects the terrestrial organisms but we have another UV radiation event and this one's a lot more powerful we're only allowed to have one mutation Whew, that's gonna really hurt well we know we need three green cubes and one blue for the seaweed so if I'm gonna lose anything I'll lose the yellow and one of the other greens leaving me with only still needing one more green we'll send these both back to the home row for PNA template and we're gonna need luck on our side again because we have to do another cancer roll for our lamp shells I think I may have been too hasty in removing that blue cube in place of removing the yellow to conserve the oxygen shield I should have rather conserved the blue cube now I have no air shield I have to roll seven dice and avoid sixes again yes did it could you tell that I was a little excited about two cancer rolls coming up with no sixes may have been a little bit uh, overzealous there but hey I'm having fun I'm enjoying the game and finally our plate tectonics or our event from below is going to bring something up and that is going to be in the coastal landform the UV irradiated ocean small mana structure four fives and sixes are going to cause us problems but we're in a warming cycle and this one really produces well in a warming cycle we move cyanobacteria over and add this and our first player is going to be red we made it through all those events with the lamp shells only losing one of its organs PNA template took a beating but it's still only one chromosome away from going to a macroorganism reds biots are going to stay in the PNA template green where can I assign the green to that'll be most beneficial I'm going to place green on the hydrothermal vent because it has a lot of mana available I know that it only organizes mana on a one but I can also assign two catalysts here to block mana death and enzyme death completely 
which means I'll get to keep rolling and organizing more mana. That's the only biont that green can assign because it doesn't have an organism yet. And also, a rule that I've missed up to this point, and I believe I put a, an annotation on there for it, that if you're on a refugium that's your color, you can re-roll the autocatalytic auto roll one time and you have to accept the results of it. But this also gives me a chance, if I don't get any ones, to go ahead and roll again. And to further clarify, I left off that not only do you have to be in the refugium that's the same color as your biont, but it has to be an uncontested refugium in order to do this reroll. And you have to reroll all dice involved, and whatever you get on that reroll, you have to accept. So we'll do the autocatalytic roll for the hydrothermal vent. We didn't get any ones, so I'm going to use that roll now and re-roll these two dice. Hopefully get a one. Perfect. Got one. Let's see, which one do I want to start with? I can't organize one. Definitely start with blue because that will give me heredity chromosomes if I flip the organism. That was our only autocatalytic roll, and my plan here is, since it is a safe refugium now, there's going to be no mana death or enzyme death, I'm just going to leave the green biont on there and try and organize all the mana, and then wait for doubles, or get doubles and organize it all at the same time, depending on how lucky I roll, and then turn the organism over, because with a blue, a yellow, a red, and three green, I'm already at what I would need to get seaweed if the PNA template is not able to do it. But it would also put me just one mutation away from several other organisms. So I'm going to wait till I organize all the mana since I already have some other things in the works here. But we have to do our Darwin roll now for the PNA template. That is our only microorganism at this time. Okay, PNA template. Oh, that's brutal. Eww, that's going to hurt a lot. All right. Yeah. Well, the triple's going to give us a blue blue catalyst, but we have no specificity chromosomes to reroll and we only have one heredity chromosome. So that hurts a lot. We're going to have to take three atrophies. Our poor little pond bacteria PNA template here just took a serious beating and is going to take three atrophies. Couldn't re-roll anything, only had the one heredity chromosome, so it's going to lose a lot here. This antioxidant will not help us. That only helps us with oxygen spike attacks. First cube we'll lose is from the Calvin cycle. Send that back to the continent landform and then we'll lose these two cubes to account for all three atrophies leaving us with just two biomes from metabolism chromosomes. Alright, let's try and recover from the beating that PNA template just took. Let's do our purchases, starting with red. We want to buy an organ for the lamp shell. And I'm going to repurchase that blue organ because I want at least a little bit of protection from cancer if that comes up on our next event. We have two biomes and PNA template, so we can make another purchase, or two purchases for that. Okay, for the PNA template we have active ocean and coastal, and it is from the continent, so it could purchase here also. I'll purchase from here. I'll purchase from the continent 
to get that blue tmRNA which will give me red queen a heat shield and HGT that does cause an O2 spike but there are no other organisms in the continent landform and then yellow I want the cytochromes for my second purchase that'll give me the ability to re-roll also but in the long run again it only puts me one cube away from an organism one more chromosome and I'll be able to go to macroorganism again with a different one this time this time it would be flatworms they need two red, a yellow, a green, and a blue that means I already have the... oh what am I thinking? That that's no good because those are two red bionts, not cubes, so I'm, I'm quite a distance away from another macroorganism but hey it's at least a start our green player can make a purchase because of its endosymbiont I want to get that UV radiation shield back so I'll purchase I'll purchase that organ with a green and that is the shell and shell and radula and that will give me an additional UV shield This 200 million year segment is completed. Lamp shells are only three organs away from going terrestrial. The PNA template took a pretty bad beating, but it's starting to reform with new mutations. And our blue player is back out here lurking, waiting to go parasitic on another organism. All right, let's see what we have in store for us here. Orbital bobbing. Our cosmic and our continental, continental, our continent landforms will now be active, which is a complete flip of what we had in our last era. And I will royal the decks. Proud of myself for remembering. And we're going to have a smite followed by an extremophile event, some cancer, UV burst, and we're going back cold. We're going to apply this smite. Pumice raft is gone. Alkaline hydrothermal seep is gone. Eutectic brine gone. And the Tholen storm clouds are just barely hanging on. We have our extremophile event. It's only a single, so the PNA template is safe. Our lamp shells are also safe. And now we have to do a cancer roll for lamp shells. This is a big roll here. I need some more of my dice luck. All right, I want the lamp shells to stick around. Here we go. Oh, I did it again. What luck. No ones. That's okay. We only got the one six, and thanks to our uh, cancer shield, that's the only one that matters, and we do have that blue back to protect us. Nice. Our UV event is a three, and we don't have anything that has more than three mutations on it. So we can roll right into our assignment phase. Red is our first player again this round. And I can't see a reason to take them off of the PNA template. Now I'll leave them on there because the cytochromes 
as the fishing, so we will be able to make two purchases this time. And hopefully we can roll doubles on our Darwin roll. Well, no, the purchases will be made after the Darwin roll, so that won't work. But still, it'll get us set up for the next time. I'm going to leave red where it's at. Green, I'm going to leave on the hydrothermal vent. And go right into the autocatalytic roll for that refugium. Before I go into the autocatalytic roll, I change my mind. I am going to assign one of these catalysts to the lamp shells as an antioxidant. Now we'll go, and I'm doing that with the red player, then moving to the green, and then going to the autocatalytic roll. All right, we need some ones. Got one. I don't want to re-roll the dice, so we'll take that one for now. All right, we'll organize the red this time. I forgot all about my blue player. I need to have him assigned to something. So let's see which side it's going to be on. One, two, and three, it'll stay on Viroid. So it will stay on the Viroid side. Staying on the Viroid side means it can only go after red and green cubes or organs or chromosomes. There is no red and green up here, so it's going after my lamp shells. So the Viroid is going to attach itself to the lamp shells and take my organ away, taking away my additional UV shield. Thanks a lot, Viroid. Since the autocatalytic roll was already done, we'll go into the Darwin roll for PNA template and the Viroid. First we'll start with PNA template. That's a pretty darn good roll. We will take that. So, we got triples and a one. The one, since we have two red metabolism chromosomes, will give us two blue catalysts, and the triples will give us an additional blue catalyst for a total of three. We could re-roll one of these and possibly get another one. And since we didn't take any errors this time, I'll go ahead and do that because even if I roll an error, I do have one heredity chromosome to protect me. And it is, but no damage done. Still get three blue catalysts. Viroid will now make its Darwin roll and incur one error, but it does have a blue biont that will protect it. Starting with the red player for our purchases now. For the lamp shells, I do have the red queen ability. I don't have a green catalyst to spend to take that back. I could purchase a yellow or a red, but I want that UV shield back. So I'll spend two via chemo selectivity, use my red queen attack to take back my shell and give myself some protection from those UV blasts. Next we have the PNA template up here. It has the fission ability. But do I want to spend all my catalysts up there? Or do I want to leave a catalyst available down here for when the green player goes to purchase another organ for my lamp shells? I do want to use up all my catalysts, so Viroid will not have the ability to purchase anything. Alright, I've made up my mind. I'm going to promote the TMRNA 
by spending that blue catalyst. Going to the other side, we have helicase. It's going to give us a heat shield, red queen, nucleus, a DNA shield, and HGT. A lot going on there. And then for another purchase, I'll spend the yellow to promote cytochromes to its other side also. Phagocytosis. Red Queen heat shield and spore. Alright. Got a much more robust organism now. And then I'll stop there, because I did have the fishing ability before. I could have made two purchases, but as soon as I flipped that over, that ended my ability to do that because it disappeared when it flipped. We'll move on to the green player. And the green player is going to purchase a brain for the lampshells using the final red catalyst from the red player's tableau. Puts us two organs away from making landfall. That's the only organism that the green player has a biont in. That would bring us around to our blue player that has no catalysts available to make a purchase. That was a pretty good 200 million year segment of time. Our PNA template has two promoted mutations on it. Still is probably at least two more mutations away from being able to turn into a macroorganism. Lamp shells are a yellow and a green purchase away from going to a terrestrial land-based organism. Our viroid is sitting here with just its biont and then I'm going to hopefully be able to Red Queen attack and make it extinct. And we're brewing some life over here on the hydrothermal vent. Maybe one really lucky roll or maybe a couple of decent rolls will organize that mana and give green their own microorganisms to work with. We'll see what happens in our next segment. Here we go. Ooh, it's the nitrogen famine. Oceanic and coastal will be active. So we're flipping the active landforms again. All right. And royal those decks. Red for a red and a red for a blue. All right. Ooh, a triple smite. A triple smite event is going to lay waste to almost everything. The depot biosphere and the hydrothermal vent are safe, but anything with less than three organized or less than four mana available are taken out leaving us with very few choices on where to go and we're gonna have an extreme file event nitric oxide shutdown the PNA template is safe it has a heat shield, it actually has three heat shields. The lamp shells are safe, it has two heat shields, but our viroid is not safe. It's going to have to take an atrophy, which kind of stinks because I was hoping to steal that biont 
and make it part of my organism. I was hoping to make this blue player extinct also, so I wouldn't have any more parasites to worry about. Next we have an O2 spike, a single O2 spike. I think we're equipped to survive that. PNA template. Whew, actually it wasn't equipped to survive it almost. It does not have any entropy chromosomes in it, but we do have an antioxidant that we can discard to protect it. Amyloid hydrolysis has plenty of oxygen shields in it. Two in there. We have one here with the vitamin, so we're, we're completely safe with those. For our assignment phase, we're starting with the green player, as indicated by our event card. He's already on the hydrothermal vent, just going to stay there. We'll come around to blue now and decide which side of the card it's going to play with. Will we stay here on the viroid side or flip it? We will stay here. Staying on the viroid side was bad news for me because it's going to go after red and green cubes. Which means it's going to attach itself here to the lamp shells because it has red and green to take where the PNA template only has red and the parasites are going to go wherever they can get the most cubes. For my red player's assignment I'm going to use I'm going to use the HGT ability to remove one of my bions from this organism and reassign it to an active row. And I'm going to add it to the hydrothermal vent. The green player is still going to be the progenote here because it has two green enzymes in it, so we're safe there because I want this to be the green player's organism. And I want the red to be on there in order to add more dice to roll to try and get these ones and hopefully become an endosymbiont further on down the line. Assignments complete. That brings us to the autocatalytic role for the hydrothermal vent. We're no longer uncontested, so we do not get to re-roll, but I'm hoping that I can get one or more ones when rolling six dice. And I was completely wrong. Our Darwin rolls are up now and we'll be starting with green who has no organisms and going to the blue viroid. Blue player hopefully doesn't lose my organs. I'd like to be able to red queen those back from him. Well, two errors. The one blue heredity chromosome Will protect it. He does not have any specificity chromosomes to re-roll, so it is going to take one atrophy. I'll choose to atrophy the red cube because that does not give me any special abilities on the card on lamp shells, even though I need it, but I'd rather be able to steal the green back that way I can get my UV shield back. Also, we have two ones. And that's going to create two blue catalysts that are going to go to red's tableau because it had the one red metabolism chromosome before it atrophied. That brings us around to our red player. The PNA template is his only microorganism. Oof. That kind of sucks. Alright, but 
going to re-roll two of them due to our specificity chromosomes. We do have the DNA error shield, so anything but sixes. Well, that didn't turn out too great. We're protected by one, or from one, due to the helicase, but we are going to have to suffer an atrophy. I'm going to atrophy phagocytosis because I want to keep my nucleus so I can make purchases much cheaper. Darwin rolls are complete. Green player makes first purchase. I'm going to purchase a red queen attack. I have to use both blue to equal green and red queen my cube back. Take my shell back again and give me my UV protection. Green used up all of the catalysts left in the red player's tableau, so blue cannot make any purchases, and then likewise red cannot make any purchases themselves, thus ending this round.